So in Wonder Woman 1984, we see Diana has created a life of her own in the real world, but the twist this time around is, this time around, Diana is showing Steve around the newly developed world. This is a completely different lifestyle to what Steve was used to in the world um, that he used to live in. It, the world has came a long way, and so... Everything he's seeing, it, it's all new to it's all new to him, and so Diana is kind of explaining, showing him around, showing him how to function as a society member, the the clothes he should wear. So prepared to the first Wonder Woman movie where it was Steve who was showing Wonder Woman around and how and how she should blend in. Um, as a society member and how to blend in and how she can't uh, carry her weapons around in society, how she can't wear her armor um, in, in public. And it's just certain things that you have to do to, uh, to blend in and to blend in to society. And so this time around, it's reverse. This time it's Diana who's showing Steve around, which... I like that story direction. Um, while it does feel very competitive with the first film, because it's the same type of storyline, just just opposite. It's reverse roles here, really. Um, and so while it does feel very competitive with what the first film did, but what the first film did, I feel like it did better than than what it was in this one. A very controversial movie online at the moment because some people like it and some people really don't like this movie. And so where do I lay on all of that? I really enjoyed this movie. While it's not perfect, it's still a really fun superhero movie. It's a really fun sequel. Are continuing off where the first movie left off. A lot of the skills Diana learnt in the first movie, they have developed um, over to this movie. Like in the first movie, she was only just getting used to the real world skills and how to blend in as a society member. And in this one, she is a member of society. Like she, um, she functions um, like everybody else, um, and so that's a big change for her character coming over to this sequel from what she learned in the, in the first movie, and that's something we learned very early on in this movie. Another thing I really liked in this movie was the opening scene, because we see Diana near the end of her training, yet to be perfect though, and in the first movie, Diana only just started her training as an Amazonian, but in this one, she's near the end of her training, but she's yet to be perfect. There's so much more that she has to learn, but coming off from where young Diana was in the first movie to where she is um, at the beginning of Wonder Woman 1984, there is a big difference in training if you're comparing both films. And that was something I felt was, I felt it, that was a good mark to start off this sequel because it's very similar to how they started off the first movie um, showing young Diana um, training. Now I'm just going to get the obvious positive out of the way. What is the biggest positive for Wonder Woman 1984? Come on, say it with me, ready? Three, two, one, Gal Gadot. She is terrific in this movie. She, uh, she once again knocks it out of the park as both Diana and Wonder Woman are both physically and emotionally. Because there are a few emotional scenes that challenge Gal Gadot as an actor. One scene in, in particular where she's, where there's, I guess, a sacrifice made by Steve. Where in order to, 
in, in, in order, like, this is the point where um, Wonder Woman has kind of been defeated. This is just after the the first encounter, I guess, with um, Wonder Woman and Cheetah, um, which I will talk about Cheetah uh, in, in, a, in just a minute. But, um, yes, Wonder Woman has kind of been, I guess, overpowered. Like, Cheetah... Um, like very uh, very early on in the movie, um, she wished to be just like Diana, and so that does happen. But then there's a few twists and turns that she doesn't expect to happen, and she starts, um, I guess, witnessing all these strange abilities. Like she has really powerful strength, she can run really fast, and somehow she is much more powerful than Wonder Woman. So she has just been um, uh, defeated and so she's weak. And so and so to drive Wonder Woman's character more, um, Steve makes a sacrifice to leave Diana, which is, I guess, kind of referencing back to that first movie in the sacrifice he made um, in the first movie to save Wonder Woman. So it's kind of referencing back to that, and that's the reason why I don't like this scene. While I will say Gal Gadot is terrific and she handles the scene uh, very, um, very well, like emotionally, she handles it very well. Um, and she holds that scene together. She holds the emotion very well, might I add. Um, but I just felt like it was very competitive um, to the sacrifice he made. And um, Steve, he doesn't really offer much to this movie. Like, uh, like yes, Chris Pine is amazing in this movie. Like, his performance is very good. He, Whenever he's on screen, he delivers a very likeable presence, very funny character, um, but he's, he's, like, he didn't really serve much of a purpose in this movie, like, um, like, he does, he has one important scene, um, the one I'm talking about, where he is, um, sacrificing himself to, uh, he's sacrificing himself to drive Diana to, you know, to drive her to, to drive her to do better, to strengthen her, um, which I thought, I thought that was a great interaction scene with both of them. Um, but, yeah, besides that, like, he doesn't really have much of, much of a purpose. Like, he kind of just shows up out of nowhere, and then there's a few, there's a few minutes with him, and then he just disappears. That was something I was really looking forward to in this movie. I was just like, ooh, how is Steve back? Did he somehow survive the events of the first movie? Was there something we don't know? Um, and yeah, it's just like the way they did it, I thought, it's just, in my own opinion, it's just, I didn't really feel like it was executed well. Um, they could have maybe wrote more of a compelling role but like I said, this one key scene does save the movie for him. It does give, I guess, more of an importance to his character. So, yeah. Um, Christian Wig as Cheetah. That was another thing I was really looking forward to. Uh, Cheetah is one of the most popular villains in the Wonder Woman uh, comics and the Wonder Woman storylines. In the comics, she's one of, one of her most famous villains, and so that was something I was really looking forward to seeing a live action version of Cheetah. And how is Christian Wig as Cheetah? Uh, if I'm being honest here, she's one of the best parts of this movie. Not, uh, not only character wise, but performance wise, I thought she gave a very compelling character. Compared to what a lot of the reviews say, um, I actually really dug her character because there's there's an arc her character goes through. Like at the start of this movie, um, her character starts out as 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 the nobody character, as the as the work person who goes to work who nobody wants to talk to. 
or interact with. Um, and then the middle of this movie, she uh, she becomes she becomes like Diana because uh, she wishes to be sexy and strong like Di like Diana, and she becomes the most popular in the workplace that everybody starts interacting with. Everybody starts hitting on her, and then at the end of this movie, she she wants more. Um, and she and then she becomes her own person like she no longer wants to become Diana but she wants to be she wants to become more powerful than Diana so she becomes the at the apex um, predator which is the cheetah while we don't get a lot of screen time of um, her character as cheetah um, like, I, I was fine with that, honestly, because, like, this this type of thing doesn't just happen overnight. It's not something, like, if you were somebody who, like, who, who was very lonely, who was very, uh, who was kind of very just down and upset and who wore daggy clothes and who nobody interacted with, who you would want that attention. You would want people to kind of walk past you and just be like and, and, and just and just and notice you and just talk to you and so when Diana finally interacts um with uh with Christian Wiggs character like there's this there's this like there's this eye opening to her character like there's like she's actually being noticed like someone is actually talking to me and um, so yeah, she wants to kind of, she wants to rise to power, she wants that attention, so she turns, she turns evil, and she has all the wrong intentions, like, you see her motivations, she wants to get noticed, she wants to, she wants to become popular, but that just isn't enough for her, she wants to, she wants to become much more than that. She develops so much over the course of this runtime, which like I was always engaged in her story because it's just like that is like that is what would happen. Like when you aren't being noticed, you would want people to to realize you. But then like but then there's this like there's this scene at the end where she like she has this I guess she has this regret that like that what she's doing is wrong and while that's not clarified to the audience you can just tell from like her facial expression that there's this that there's this feel of that there's this feel of regret like there was this like that there was this hole in her heart at the start of this movie that she wanted to feel like with with power and she wanted to she kind of, she, like she wanted to run the joint, which I'm um, speaking of running the joint. Um, I want to talk about Max Lord because he is the second bad guy villain in this, and basically Max Lord, basically he is basically he is a big TV commercial guy. Uh, that's and and he, he's a, he's a big businessman um, at the start of this movie, and then. Um, and then towards the middle of this movie, he, he's the guy who, who gets everything he wants. Like he makes deals and and he grants wishes to some of the most famous people across the world, to governments, presidents, all of that, and he makes their wishes come true. And as a result of that, he's taking away he's taking away something that they cherish. Um, and granting them their wish and each time he makes a wish he becomes more invincible he becomes more powerful uh, to the point where at the end of this movie Wonder Woman can't even defeat him and he's he's the one who's taking control of everything like he is the mastermind behind everything because without Max Lord Cheetah um, wouldn't become cheetah um and so um in a way i guess max lord and cheetah do end up um working together um where um where cheetah uh, is protecting max lord in the museum scene as you saw in the trailer where wonder woman is attacking all these security guards 
Um, and so um, Cheetah is protecting Max Sword because she wants she wants that one wish. Um, and so in a way they do I guess work together like Max Lord um, as his character is he uh, he promises um, Cheetah this wish made the world like turn to war like there's like there's uh, there's nuclear bombs there's violence there's like like basically everything that can go wrong has gone wrong and, and basically the world has basically the world has turned to war um and he's just made the world like he's made the world like the worst place to live in at at the moment um where where violence is breaking out um and like as you see um very early on in the film like the world that these that like children and all that are living in like it's not the greatest greatest world like e even then one thing i did really like about max lord's character is at the end there's this sense there's this sense of regret he gets um which this was probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie actually where um where max lord like where he he looks he looks at what the world has become with all the violence the with all the violence the shooting nuclear bombs and he and in his head he can hear his he can hear his child um yelling his name he can hear his child um looking for him and did that and that immediately makes him feel makes him feel um makes him feel a sense of regret and he wants everything to go back to normal so his last and final wish is to is for everything to go back just the way it was and basically and basically to undo um to to undo his wish so everything everyone he made a, a deal with like that is all off and and then you suddenly see all you see all the all the nuclear um bomb um dots basically planted on every corner of the globe they have now disappeared um and there's no more violence or the violence has stopped all the chaos and um and Max Lord he runs to his kid and there's a great moment where they where they are hugging um and there's a scene early on in in the movie where um Max Lord where his kid makes a wish to his dad saying um I saying I wish for more kindness um and then at the end they kind of like just bring that little scene back into play um where it where it's now um where it's now like you don't need you don't need a wish for for me to love you i love you just the way you are because you are my son and that's a similar one to what he says at the end of this movie which i i loved that because it's just it just it proves like even like even villains like they have a heart and it's just like they can they can stop what they're doing gave a lot of heart to max lord's character because um at the beginning of this movie he was always the guy that was obsessed with business that was obsessed with with getting the money with being famous with being on top and then like at the end it's just like he he realizes um he realizes that family and that his kid is more important than anything else and like i said i thought that was a great thing because it showed the human side of max lord and um and and, and it gave more light to his character and that, like that's why i say that cheetah and max lord are really great villains like some of the best comic book villains in comic book movies are, are the ones that you can actually get on their side that they that they have that human side to them like they aren't just pure evil like like they're, they're doing this for a reason and just like um uh, like um cheetahs um storyline throughout the three acts of this 
I thought was one of the um, most compelling um, story arcs in this entire movie because her character, like I said, develops so much over this runtime. Another thing I should mention is the CGI on Cheetah because I know a lot of people have been criticizing this um, and all of that, but I am here to stand and say I actually liked the CGI on Cheetah. Like, it wasn't fantastic by any means, but as a viewer, it was believable enough to the point where it was convincing. Like, the little details of fur looked really good. Um, like, going into this movie, I was afraid that it would look like cats bad. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised because I expected the CGI on Cheetah going into this movie to look complete shit. And I came out of the, and I came out of the theater really, really surprised and really satisfied um, with the look. Even though we only maybe get ten minutes of Cheetah in this movie, like not long at all, but. I, I thought that final showdown between Wonder Woman and Cheetah was one of the highlight fight scenes in this movie. And speaking of action, like, I'm talking about a comic book movie, and I haven't even mentioned the action in this movie. So how are the action sequences in this movie? They are quite good. Um, the Like, there's the museum scene that you saw in the, in the trailer, which that was really kick-ass, but... Um, and then there was that car chase scene, which I do want to get into that car chase scene because that's where one of my issues come into play with this movie, the editing. Um, the editing flows quite well throughout this movie, minus a few little, um, minus a few little snippets, I guess. So there's a scene in the car chase where, uh, there's some kids on the road playing ball ahead of them and if Diana doesn't see these kids so she saves the kids and she loses her lasso and then in the very next shot I'm not joking here in the very next shot she has her lasso again with her and I'm just wondering when did she go and receive her lasso? Because last time we saw Diana, she was on the ground, um, rolling, trying to protect these kids. And I'm like, when did she have time in between all of this? Like when she's holding the kids, she has her lasso. I'm just thought, like, did you avoid these kids? Did you just abandon these kids to go get your lasso? Or, like, what happened? Like, it's like, I was just, I was just like, it's like, it's a small little thing, but I, I mean, that seemed really bugged me because, like, it makes no sense. Like, it's like, like what? Like, I I don't want to think too much about the scene, but um, yeah, that was a scene that like I felt like the editing maybe they they could have showed it, but like, but when? Like, when did she have time to to both save these kids and grab her lasso while the car chase was still happening? It's, yeah, like that, that, I uh, thought the editing was, it was a bit off on, uh, what else do I have here, um, Steve, Steve Trevor, so, I feel like I've already talked about this, but, yeah, I was disappointed with, um, Steve Trevor's story, and I found his character was a waste of potential, I think is a good way of putting it, like, he has one key scene, but the rest of his role 
in this movie is just kind of looking around and exploring this new world. Like, there's a great scene that was in the trailer where um, Diana is talking about art, and then so um, Steve looks at a garbage bin, and he looks at, like, he looks at, he looks at the little details, and he's analysing it, and then, um, and then Diana tells uh, him that, that, oh, it's a garbage bin, and so I thought that was a great scene, but, like, those scenes when he is discovering everything in this new world for the first time, like, that is, they are great sequences, they are great scenes, um, but it's just, that's really all his role, is just looking around, discovering, like, he's not really there, he's not really there for the action, like, he is there during the car chase, um, during the car chase and, and the museum fight scene, um, and he does, you know, punch a couple of security guards and all that, but there's not really, I guess, a a particular story point he has, or something particular he has to do. Like, he does help Diana, but, like, does he really serve a purpose within all of that? And, like, and, like, yeah, I get, um, um, Steve is, is, Steve is Diana's love interest, but I, I just, I didn't, I felt like his character was, was more compelling in the first movie. I just, I don't really feel like he was needed in this one, and I felt like his appearance in this just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, like, there's this, I guess, scene when um, Diana, when this strange guy is calling Diana's name, and Diana's like, hey, I don't even know you, and... Um, then it's, then that is revealed to be, um, Steve Trevor, um, which, yeah, I, I just, I, I felt the pacing of it was terrible, um, and I felt just like the execution, um, I feel like if you remove Steve, the movie would be no difference, like, it does, he does add, uh, to some degree, some heart to this movie, at the decision she makes, like, I've already talked in, basically in detail about that, so I'm not going to talk about that again, but he does add some heart, and he does drive her character, but, like, that's not my point here, my point is just, like, is, he has, he doesn't, like, Steve, he had a reason to be in that first movie, um, like, there was a particular, I guess, story thing for him to do. In this one, he has nothing to do. He just kind of appears and goes. That's his, that's his, that's his role. That's his character in this movie is he appears, he looks at stuff, and he helps Diana out in, in a few fight scenes, but then he just kind of disappears. And it's, yeah, like I, I did not like um, I felt like, the, yeah, like I said, the pacing of his reveal was terrible. I felt like the execution of, like, of his whole character, um, was, if I'm being honest, needless. Um, what else? Like, for people who like Steve's character in this, like, sure, like, each to their own, um, like, if you like Steve's character, like, I am glad you can like his character in this movie, but for me personally, what I got out of watching this movie is, is only what I can report on, I can't judge from what other people are saying, and yeah, it's, even, like, his last scene, which was a very emotionally um, good scene for um, for Diana. Um, I, I I felt like it was just, it was too competitive to his decision in the first movie. It just feels like his character in this. It just feels like a copy and paste. It just it feels like a worse version of what that first movie did of like of Steve like helping. Um, Diana, um, 
blend in with the real world in the first movie and then it just in this movie it just feels very shoved in there um so yeah it just it feels like it, it took everything that kind of that people liked about that first movie uh, about um about steve's character and one woman's character and just and kind of made a worse version like of steve's role in this movie um but yeah like I, I was impressed with steve's role and that really let me down because i was really looking for like seeing him in the trail it's just like i was just like oh like th this could be a really interesting story direction um but yeah like i, I was impressed um like i'll i'll stick with the first movie when it when it comes to steve's character because i feel like he had a great int introduction in that movie he had a great end point in that movie and so they should just draw the line there kept his character there that's for my overall thoughts on wonder woman 1984 is this as good as the first movie definitely not um like this movie it has things in it that like that really expand from the first movie um like with diana's lifestyle um choice in this i thought that yeah, really expanded on and it showed a different side to her to what it was in the first movie and it and it and it, and it, uh, and it expanded more on that um and I, and there's just there's like there's there's little things in this movie that I think are better than the first movie, but then there's other things in this movie I feel like they didn't quite push it that far for it to be great. Um, and uh, like for example, like Steve, his character had so much potential to be good in this movie. Like he could have had a really good character continuation. But yeah, like, but yeah, as for the action, the, I feel like the first film still has better action scenes like this scene, uh, like this movie doesn't beat the No Man's Land scene in the first movie by far. There isn't an action scene in this movie that is better than that. Um, but yeah, the action is, is is very entertaining. The final showdown between Wonder Woman and Cheetah is one of the highlight scenes. It's one of the most entertaining sequences in the entire movie. Um, this it's a very this is a very emotionally drawn movie. It's a, it's a, this is a this is definitely a character story for Cheetah and Max Lord, and and them kind of just them taking power but then them having them them having regret and then still like feeling that there's like that there's more to life than like than power and money which I like I said I loved I loved those storylines. I loved the technically everything they did with Max Lord and Cheetah's character. So like in the end like would I watch this movie again? Definitely. Like I would. This is a movie I would. I'm definitely going to see a second time for sure. And there were some scenes in this movie that looked great on the big screen. Like there's this scene that you saw in the trailer where it was Steve and Diana, like in the jet and fireworks were going off in the background. That was a scene that looked great on the big screen um the the final showdown looked amazing on, on the big screen but yeah like i do recommend that you do watch this movie and i do also do recommend that you watch this movie with judging from your own opinion but anyways guys that is my review for wonder woman 1984 if you have seen wonder woman 1984 let me know down in the comments what did you think of wonder woman 1984 did you like it did you think it was male did you really not like it i know this is a controversial movie so i'm curious to know what you guys think of it so let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the next video.